So how about traditional medicine and uh, diabetes? Well, as I mentioned, uh, according to the World Health Organization, we're already in an epidemic mode with obesity and uh, diabetes. But what we fail to, uh, to remember in our bubble that we live in, we're, we're in the 20% bubble of the world where uh, we rely on, on uh, medical care for, for our uh, health care. But 75% oh, of the world's population, even as we speak today, rely on uh, traditional medicine and, and natural health products for their first line of, of health care. Uh, over the years, there have been a lot of plants identified worldwide from all different uh, countries and, and uh, uh, cultures. Uh, some of them well, better known are fenugreek from uh, Asia, the Middle East, uh, Mediterranean. Bitter gourd is from Asia. Nopal from uh, South uh, Mexico and South America. And ginseng here from uh, North America are uh, well-known ones. Unfortunately, the, the research has not completely, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not very strong still. It's improving a lot. Uh, so there's not that much evidence-based data available on the anti-diabetic activity of a lot of these plants. What's uh, reassuring is that uh, whenever they've been tested, 80% of them did show some promising biological effects. So we, we, you know, we should pay attention to this traditional medicine because it's not uh, a frivolous thing. It's based on, on, on human experience and, and uh, uh, in the case of Aboriginal and other period, uh, knowledge that is uh, 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 earned and also knowledge that is gifted. Um, <coughs> one of the major problems with natural health products also on the market is that of uh, product quality. I won't dwell too much into that because we have a, uh, a nice uh, new regulations in Canada which helps uh, improve the, the, the quality. But uh, just suffice it uh, that you know that uh, there's even some problems with identification. It's not the right botanical species that, uh, that you get when you uh, buy sometimes uh, some of these material. You don't know the source, the preparation, the dosages. Uh, all this is improving in, in Canada and several other countries. Our own work has been uh, concentrated on, on, as uh, Paulette told you, on, on anti-diabetic uh, uh, natural health products uh, over the last uh, 10 years or so, 12 years. Uh, I, I started with uh, products from uh, Morocco. My, my wife is Moroccan. And so uh, uh, this is nigella and uh, argan oil. We've also studied uh, the blueberry that everyone loves here, uh, cashew seed with some African colleagues. And what I will talk to you more about today is the actual uh, work we're doing with the Cree about the boreal forest plants, which relate to Cree traditional medicine. Uh, of course, this is to remind me that diabetes is more pronounced in the Aboriginal populations. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this, and I will give you some statistics in a moment. So let's get into the crux of this project. Uh, first of all, the, the territory we're uh, talking about is uh, the Eastern James Bay, as I told you, uh, territory. Uh, there are about 15,000 uh, Cree, uh, uh, Euch Cree, uh, spread over nine communities, which are uh, indicated here. And four of them, the, the ones circled in uh, uh, green, uh, are involved in the project. There's two more that are uh, uh, currently in the process of ratifying the research agreement. So we have, uh, uh, pretty soon we'll have a majority of the, uh, of the communities involved uh, in, in the project with us. There were two major problems addressed by this uh, project. Uh, one was a near abandonment of Cree healing practices uh, over the, the last uh, half decade or so. Uh, both healing practices and healers uh, were uh, almost uh, or went, went underground, but uh, you, know, I'll, you know the story more or less. And also the sudden rise of diabetes, uh, the, di the epidemic uh, since the 1990s, and I'll show you some data. So in terms of the first problem, well, uh, the, the sort of Western or what's called allopathic medical care uh, came to the, the communities around the 1930s. And within 30 years, every community had either a nursing station or a clinic. And then in the late 70s, uh, the, the Quebec uh, Ministry of Health uh, created a regional uh, uh, department called the Cree Board of Health and Social Services uh, that is one of the partners in, in this project. And they were responsible for all services uh, from that time onwards. And there have been no official recognition of, of the Cree healing ways until very recently. Now for the second problem, the uh, rise in the, uh, uh, the, the, the prevalence of diabetes in, uh, 
in the creep. So this is still in AUSG. You see that uh, 30 years ago in the 80s or nine, early 90s, there was essentially no uh, or very little diabetes. And look at the uh, exponential uh, increase. In, uh, it's really uh, very alarming. Uh, these are the most recent numbers from the uh, report of the Cree uh, Diabetes Information System put out last uh, fall. And uh, so overall in the uh, <coughs> AUSG territory, it's about 22%. And if you adjust that for age, we have an age-adjusted prevalence of almost one in three persons, uh, adult person in the uh, Cree community. So it's really a dramatic problem. So uh, it was sort of a convergence. We were... Uh, looking to study uh, anti-diabetic uh, medicines. Uh, and, and obviously, in the Aboriginal populations, made a lot of sense to, to study that. Uh, and at the same time, or even previous to that, the uh, communities themselves wanted to uh, uh, tap into their own traditional medicine to help this, uh, this health, with this health problem. So the aim, uh, the, uh, the aim was to explore the uh, identify some plants that, that are used by the Cree to treat some stim symptoms, and I'll give you more details in a second, to then be able to uh, use these plants uh, in the context uh, of diabetes for Cree diabetics. Of course, to do such a thing, you need a, a multiple, uh, multiple uh, expertises. Of course, the first and foremost is the Cree traditional knowledge. And then uh, from the scientific, uh, more scientific side, uh, Western scientific side, that is, uh, the, we did ethnobotany, phytochemistry, pharmacology, nutrition, and uh, endocrinology. And I will give you a bit of an idea about how we came about. So as Paulette mentioned that in the introduction, we got a new emerging team grant from 2003 to 2000, 2006 sorry, to make the proof of concept that the plants that we would identify through this tapping into the, uh, the Cree traditional knowledge would yield plants that have uh, anti-diabetic potential. Uh, then we came back, we, we did that successfully, and I will show you. Uh, we came back in 2006 with a more complete, and this is the more complete model. And as you see, it's centered on the Cree Nation, the traditional knowledge, and the medicinal plants of the boreal forest. And little arrows going in and out uh, uh, are there to uh, express that we really wanted the, uh, the Cree, and uh, the elders especially, to play a central role in every aspect of this project. So I will just walk you through this uh, over the next uh, couple of minutes, the different components. So it starts with the ethnobotany with uh, Alain Cuillerie at the uh, Montreal Botanical Garden. Uh, then uh, our colleague uh, John Arneson here at the University of Ottawa uh, is one of the Canadian experts in, in uh, the chemistry of plants. Uh, then in the broad uh, <coughs> umbrella of pharmacology, there are uh, uh, our, our colleague here, uh, uh, Stephanie Bennett at the University of Ottawa and, and others at, uh, at uh, Université de Montréal under uh, my leadership. Uh, here, Brian Foster is sitting among us uh, from uh, uh, the University of Ottawa and also uh, the therapeutic um, products branch uh, here. Uh, the, the directorate at uh, Health Canada is an expert in uh, toxicology. This was a component that both elders and clinicians insisted a lot when we went from the initial uh, uh, new emerging team grant to the team full team grant that was one of the major concerns that we do no harm to anyone with this project of course you can't talk about uh, diabetes without having a nutritional aspect and Tim Johns uh, of the uh, Center for Indigenous uh, uh, Nutrition and the Environment at McGill University is a, a member of the team then we uh, also involved two uh, clinicians from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Jean-Louis Chiasson from Université de Montréal and uh, Jean-François Yale from McGill University who uh, participate in, in multi-central, uh, multi multinational uh, uh, research with diabetes drugs, but they were open-minded enough to uh, be interested by this project and uh, have acted as uh, consultants, if you want, to uh, guide us in the more clinical aspects of the project. And finally, the Cree Board of Health and Social Services of James Bay that I mentioned earlier uh, our, uh, uh, it's mostly under their guidance that the educational and uh, I don't like the word integration anymore, but it's the inclusion of traditional medicine into the healthcare. This this aspect, uh, along with the Cree, of course, the Cree nations are also at the center of all of this. So I will uh, uh, give you also an idea of the <coughs> the flow chart of how we've uh, 
the different steps have happened in this project. So we start with identification of the, the plants of interest uh, by the ethnobotanical studies. So we've identified about 17 species with potential. And I'll explain this in a second. Then we prepare extracts. We do a, a, a series of assays with cells. I will show you all of this. The f that's for all of the species, also the uh, toxicology. Then we, the species that are most active in these initial tests, we take to further studies uh, to understand their mechanisms, validate it in, in a whole animal, uh, and try to identify uh, what <coughs> chemical components in the plants may be uh, giving some activity. Uh, this all leads, so the most active species of, after all of this are taken more to clinical studies and, uh, and I will get back to this again. We, we try to identify these active principles not to develop new drugs but rather to uh, have a sort of quality control uh, or standardization or characterization of the traditional uh, preparations. So let's get into the first far parts. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm the pharmacologist, so it'll be skewed towards the pharmacology a little bit. But uh, let me take you through the, the, uh, the different parts of the project. So this is Alain Cuerrier, uh, the ethnobotanist. Uh, he has been responsible of overseeing uh, four, a total of four uh, ethnobotanical surveys that were carried out uh, uh, 2003, 2004, and two of them in 2008. So we had a series, because diabetes was uh, not so frequent as you saw in, uh, even uh, uh, 30 years ago, uh, we thought of approaching this more from the angle of a set of symptoms. So that's where I remind you the, the symptoms that I mentioned at the very beginning of the talk. So we asked elders and healers about which plants they would use for uh, these key symptoms, uh, 15 of them, of uh, diabetes, including, as I mentioned, uh, tiredness, uh, frequent urination, sores that don't heal. Uh, some of them were very specific for diabetes, others were less specific like diarrhea, for instance. So we ranked the plants according to how many elders mentioned a given plant, for how many symptoms the plant was uh, uh, mentioned, and we also uh, made a, we weighed the uh, symptoms according to their importance or relevance to diabetes. As I said, uh, sores that don't heal are very specific for diabetes, uh, diarrhea much less, so we uh, adjusted that. And what we came up with is what uh, Alain calls a syndromic importance value. If you want, it's the anti-diabetic potential. So when we do this uh, calculation with all of these factors, uh, of course the plants that have their highest number here are the most likely to have some anti-diabetic uh, activity. And I purposely left, left an old slide to show you that we protect the uh, traditional knowledge and intellectual property of the Cree. Uh, until things are published, we don't identify the plant species. So here it just shows you the results of our uh, approach, which was a new approach. Uh, the yellow bars, so that's the green bars, and this is our results. Then you have the, uh, a, a more classical uh, 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 method that's used in ethno, uh, ethnobotany called it informant consensus. And then when we took each uh, of the 15 symptoms and went to the literature to see what was out there, uh, we also had the uh, data that came up as the gray bar. So you see that it, it fits pretty well, so it validates the, the method that we have developed. Uh, since this is published, I can show you the, the top eight of these plants which we started uh, studying uh, in the initial tests. So these are, uh, some of them are, are quite, of course everything is from the boreal forest. So we have uh, uh, more like food plants like Labrador tea. Uh, and uh, a lot of uh, evergreen trees, obviously, uh, uh, and also uh, an interesting plant which is, grows in bogs called the uh, pitcher plant. 